Today, St. John tells us that God is love. A communion of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, giving and receiving perfect love. Love, by its nature, cannot be contained, as we saw in the first reading. The Holy Spirit even came down upon the Gentiles who had not yet been baptized. God's love is abundant, overflowing, and is revealed in many different ways. On this Mother's Day weekend, I thought I would seek the advice of several children to help us understand this gift of love. Chris, age six, says, Love is when you go out to eat and give somebody most of your french fries without making them give you any of theirs. Karen, age seven, says, When you love somebody, your eyelashes go up and down and little stars come out of you. Tommy, age six, says, Love is like a little old woman and a little old man who are still friends, even after they've known each other forever. Nikki, age six, says, If you want to learn to love better, you should start with the friend that you hate. Hmm. In reflecting upon today's scripture passages, Bishop Robert Barron observes that the key to appreciating this command, love one another, is found in the words of Jesus when he said, it was not you who chose me, but I who chose you. All too often in our lives, we put ourselves in the driver's seat, focusing on our decision to love God, rather than the truth that it is God who has first loved us, and God who calls us to love one another in the same way that Jesus loves the Father. One mistake that is commonly made in the spiritual life is that we think we have to earn God's love. God's love is a gift freely given. It is not a reward to be earned. Before we say or do anything in life, we are loved into existence by God. Even when we sin, God does not stop loving us, but draws us back to himself. The good we do, the commandments we keep, are the way that we offer thanks to God for the gifts of his love. We show our love for God by being the gift of love to others, by treating people with dignity and respect, by forgiving those who have hurt us, by caring for those who are in need, all of this in imitation of Christ. As you can imagine throughout the centuries, many saints have tried to write about the gift and the mystery of God's love. St. Augustine says that love is the hand that reaches out to help another. Love is the feet that hasten to the poor and needy. Love has eyes to see misery and want. Love has ears to hear the sigh and sorrows of others. That's how Augustine describes love. St. Thomas Aquinas defines love in this way, to do the will and the good of the other and to act upon it. St. Teresa of Calcutta says, if we really want to love, we must learn to forgive. And remember, intense love does not measure, it simply gives. And St. Clare of Assisi writes, we become what we love, and who we love shapes our being. If we love things, then we become a thing. When we love, we are to become the image of the beloved. This means we are to become vessels of God's compassionate love for others. 
Today's gospel reminds us that we have all been appointed to go forth and to bear fruit, fruit that will remain. Through baptism, we have been chosen and we have been sent on mission. The spiritual journey is just not a personal journey one makes. Christian spirituality is always oriented toward mission. All of the great heroes in the Bible were given a mission to reveal the love of God. In this, we can see that love is more than a feeling or a sentiment. Love is our call, our mission, and it takes a lot of courage to love like Christ. The depth of God's love has been revealed to us in the precious blood of Jesus through his act of unconditional love and obedience to the Father. In imitation of Christ, each one of us must ask, in what way am I called to lay down my life for my friends? If we believe in God and in some small way grasp the truth of what God has done for us, how God loves us, then the most reasonable response for us is to love, to live in love. Now this takes humility and surrender because to keep God's commandments and to follow the teachings of Jesus demands self-sacrificial love. We must be willing to die to self, to take up our cross and to follow Jesus. On this Mother's Day weekend, we honor those who first revealed to us the amazing gift of God's love. Reflecting on this gift, St. Therese of Lusseau said, the loveliest masterpiece of the heart of God is the love of a mother. As a people of faith, we believe that we encounter the love of God each time we gather at the banquet table of the Lord to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. In fact, St. Thomas Aquinas teaches that, and I quote, the Eucharist is the sacrament of love. It signifies love. It produces love. The Eucharist is the consummation of the whole spiritual life. Here we become one with God, who is love. As we receive God's love today in Holy Communion, may we become more and more what we receive, and may we be witnesses of God's love to all by what we say and what we do. This is how we will bear fruit and how we will remain with God into eternal life.